Are the canaries in the mine shaft beginning to die off and we're just not paying attention to these signals? Today we're going to have a look at Bitcoin, the massive news that continues to come out, the lackluster price increases which are going along with this news and trying to understand where the hell we are right now. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. My name is Jason and you found your home of hopium free cryptocurrency content. If you like the sound of that, hit the subscribe button down below and the bell notification icon so you can be alerted for the next hopium free crypto update. And if you find value from the video, leave us a like down below. It goes a long way to helping out the channel. All right, guys, let's take a look at Bitcoin on the chart and then we're going to cross over to some of the news articles. So the two days that I have here highlighted with the little green arrows are days that Elon Musk has pumped the price. The first day is when Elon tweeted about Bitcoin and the second day is when it was announced that Tesla was buying or Tesla had bought $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin. Now, on that sort of news, we would probably expect the market to pump a little more the following days. And to note that the market didn't increase anymore, and what I'm looking at here are specifically the closing prices. So the close here is 46,400, 46,500. Then we had a lower close, we've had a higher close, and we're just starting to slowly step our way up. Now, I'm paying attention to the closing price because that is the price that the market says shows over for the day. That's an important price to pay attention to, not only the high price, but the closing price as well. So if you're a trader, you probably know about that. You know, closing prices for any particular time frame are important. So looking back, we have Elon Musk tweet pump. Not much happened, but we did end up seeing a slow climb up to the old all-time high. It was on lower volume. And as we continue to push through these highs, we're getting lower and lower volume. The other sign, so the other canary that is dying off in the, the coal mine here is we are now at our 50% point from our major FIB level. If you're a follower of the channel, you know we look at FIB levels and their support and resistance. The major one here is our FIB extension tool. Basically, we're taking the whole range. This is from the COVID low back in March 2020 and projecting it to the recent all-time high, the previous one to what we're currently sitting at, and then back to the current crash, and I say crash because it wasn't that huge, but to the crash low of 28,800. So this is a range that we are looking to repeat in order to understand the strength of the market moving forward. So currently we see exactly 50% of that range showing signs of resistance. We have yet to close above this range for a couple of days straight. Only yesterday saw us close slightly above this range by about $100. So I really want to see a stronger close above this level to let me know that maybe we do have some more strength left in this market to continue on to our next price prediction points. We like to call them price forecasts, but people searching in Google love to call it price predictions. So. The forecast after the 50% level is 52,300. Then we move on to 58,000. I'm probably calling it closer to 60,000. And then we really want to see the market get to 67,000 to at least repeat this entire price range one more time. And the reason for that is we want to see the strength in these ranges continue on to be at least 100%, if not a little more. And what I'd look for after that is 76,500. So my real targets here, before we get a breakdown, we do not wanna see 28,800 breakdown. That is a low that's set now. And if we were to go below those areas, I would probably say that the show is over. Uh, I don't want the show to be over. I definitely wanna see six figure Bitcoin uh, I'm hopeful that this is going to be the low. So we already see another low price uh, here. So we got a price of 27,700. We have another low of 28,800 and then another low of 29,100. So I think amongst all of those areas, we should see a low hold at this point. If there was a spike down and come back, no problems. Even better, we shake out the weak hands and we get to continue moving forward. But from this point, 
we really, really want to see this market at least push up stronger again with some increasing volume. We have seen the volume begin to die off as this market has pushed higher. So that's a worrying sign if we take a look back at 2017 all time highs and we see a similar ish pattern form. Can have a look back. Market begins to push to new highs and more new highs and more new highs. And everyone's thinking this thing is going to 50,000, 100,000. It can't be over. There's a whole lot of people who haven't bought yet. But the volume continues to die off as the market increases. We've got a couple of bars here right at the top, very, very low volume at the top and the market can't hold and completely dumps straight after that. It takes out a couple of these major lows here, which is the first sign that we probably are changing trends. So I'm hopeful that we don't see that, but it is probably not out of the question that we'll see a dump at some point. Now, where could that point be? 50% where we currently are is a pretty good point for that to occur but we definitely don't want to see it break these lows. If we get beyond here, then just those other numbers that I've mentioned earlier, 52,000, 60,000, and then 67,000 would be some great areas to at least hit as a target in the meantime before we get a pullback. And we always want pullbacks in these markets so that they can then shoot on higher and longer. We don't want this thing to end too soon. We don't want it to shoot straight up and it'd be all over. We really want some reload points, some reaccumulation zones before we can take off again. So if you're getting in late and you do happen to experience a market pullback of in the vicinity of say 20 to 30%, I think it could still keep us in the game. We might even get a pattern set up that looks like a shoulder and a head and then maybe another shoulder. And this is projecting very far out. This might not even happen. Maybe we don't even see any of this occur. But I'm just thinking about ideas and patterns that we may see down the f in the future just to prepare ourselves in case this happens. So overall with this, personally, I'm not buying anymore because of a number of other reasons. I want to see a level that becomes a really solid support before we shoot up again, especially since we haven't shot up on very high volume. That's a little bit worrying. I put a post out uh, yesterday on my YouTube community page and I asked, are you waiting to buy Bitcoin at this time or are you buying Bitcoin? And out of 3,000 votes, three out of 10 people said they were buying now, seven out of 10 people said they were not buying Bitcoin. I think everyone believes the price is going to go up higher, but if people aren't buying Bitcoin, what is going to happen to the price? We might have a few buyers, but of course, we always have some sellers. And even if the price is bullish long term, we can still see short term downswings. Now, like I've said, I'm not saying that this is what we will see straight away. I think we could end up pushing up a little bit longer. Maybe we even shoot to 60 or 70,000 before we get some sort of pullback. I don't know. But it isn't it, the base is getting a little bit shaky at this point. Now, let's have a quick look at our 20 moving average week. That is our 20 week moving average before we move on to a couple of news articles. And, uh, and beyond from that point. So our 20 week moving average, we are a long, long way from home. It's currently sitting at 23,700. Now we're about eight weeks above this old all time high, which is pretty cool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're into about our ninth week. Basically this is a 20 week moving average. Now we need 20 weeks of price data above this level to increase the average, which is just makes sense, right? So if we happen to sit around this level for another 12 weeks, that's almost three months, brings us out to around May. That's not a bad time in my opinion. Could go up for another week or two, like I've said that. I'm just projecting scenarios to prepare ourselves because we do want to see a bounce off this 20-week uh, moving average. Otherwise, we could end up in a very unsafe position like we are at this shaky top comes down, crashes through it, bounces and finds resistance at the 20 MA before we go into a massive bear market. So the weekly chart is what we want to look at. It's the macro view of all of what's going on at the moment. What we look we can look at uh, previously to this is a 2013 bull market. The market got away from the 20 week, came back, sat on it, fell beneath, huge volume picking it up and then it took off for a second leg. So we could see a massive spike, a long-ish bear market, but not too bad. 
and then we see another ultimate spike as well. So we could be following a 2013 pattern where it just took off and then you go through a very prolonged bear market like we've already experienced in 2018 and 19. So with such a huge accumulation zone through 2014-15, primarily in 2015, we did see a solid rocket move up for a couple of years. Now, because we've seen such a long uh, accumulation period this time, that's what leads me to believe we still have a long way to go, but we do need to go through some shaky, turbulent periods before we get there. And with the news, which we're about to cover now, all of this good news not being able to push the price like it pushed it from the breakout of the all-time high, I have a feeling that maybe some of these canaries are giving us signals that we could be coming to an end. What's that news I talk about? All right, yesterday we covered MasterCard is talking about bringing cryptocurrency payments into their platform, where at least you can transfer cryptocurrencies across their network. So you don't even have to sell out into fiat. You can literally just transfer crypto to crypto. So that was on Wednesday, exclusive on Coindesk. Wednesday, what happened? on Wednesday on the chart, one day. Uh, it's Friday at the moment, Wednesday, we had a reversal. <laughs> on such big news like that, I wonder why we had a reversal. The only day we've really seen strong uh, a strong move was Monday when Tesla announced that it had already bought 1.5 billion. It wasn't saying it was buying anymore, it's announcing that it already bought it. So who knows whether they bought it through this period of January or late last year when they were talking to Michael Saylor of MicroStrategies. It could have been any point in that period there which saw a lot of the big volume. Who knows? Uh, moving on to the next bit of news, SEC Commissioner Pierce says, market is ready for a Bitcoin ETP. So this is an electronic, uh, an exchange traded product. So there's another massive, that's a, that's a huge piece of news in my opinion. We got a huge product coming out in the US for people to be able to trade Bitcoin. What do we see on the markets? Nothing. We saw nothing in the price change. The way they try to skew the news to say that a lot of this information or this, a lot of this news is playing effect on the chart is to talk about new all-time highs. But in terms of a percentage, it is nothing. It is literally 3.88% for the first piece. Then if we go from the top to the next top, 1% to the next top 1.6%. But they're all new all-time highs. We saw on Tuesday a high of 48,200. Then we saw 48,000, call it 700. Then we saw 49,000 uh, today. So the, the news can really play with people who don't understand how to read a chart by just calling it. We saw a new all-time high again today on this news. We saw a new all-time high again today on this news. We saw another new all-time high today on this other massive news, MasterCard, ETP. We also see uh, there's an e ETF coming out, Bitcoin's first ETF approved in Canada. So sure, it's Canada. It's maybe a tenth of the population of the US. Uh, but at least that is an ETF and it's already begun in North America, which isn't too close to, of course, the US, which is trying to get its own ETF, its own big Bitcoin ETF. So that is pretty decent news. Nothing happened on the price. Today we've seen down action as well. Other thing we know of is Tesla. 1.5 billion throws a cat amongst the institutional pigeons. So looks like there are other companies all wanting a piece of the action. When are they going to buy? Probably want to dump the price so that they can get a better price, a better entry price, so they can be on par with Tesla. More big news. Fund strat dramatically increases Bitcoin price target 2021. Now, this is nothing like Tesla or MasterCard or an ETF or an ETP, but people are all increasing their price targets, 40K to 100K. Still pretty reserved, but price targets are going up. Finally, we can look at the nine public companies with the biggest Bitcoin portfolios. I don't think any of these are going to be a surprise to anyone, so I won't waste your time too much with them. Of course, MicroStrategy is here. 71,000 Bitcoin, three billion worth. It's probably more value in their holdings than it is in their business. Uh, looking further down, we obviously know Tesla. We know Galaxy Digital, which is Mike, Michael Novogratz big proponent of cryptocurrency, talked about it for many, many uh, years throughout that bear market. Uh, next, Grayscale, like these are all known 
companies. So we can really see that a lot of these have already put their investment into Bitcoin, which may mean, like we saw on the volume, that there aren't as many people buying anymore, even though we believe the price is going to go up. So what does this all mean? We've got a whole lot of good news not much price action happening from all of this good news. That's what's leading me to believe that we may be seeing some sort of slowdown until we can catch up again. Remember, time is on our side here. If we can last a long time here on the markets, on this bull market, then we can sustain a longer bull market. We don't wanna see this thing shoot up to the moon. So right now, Personally, like I said earlier in the video, I'm not buying any more Bitcoin at this point. However, I will leave you with a couple of coins which I do like the look of on their price charts. I'm not saying anything about the company themselves. It's just the price chart which I think looks pretty decent. The first one is Tezos. Now, I like charts where I can get more Bitcoin. I'm not just interested in the USD price because if I was, I could just buy Bitcoin because I believe Bitcoin is going to go up a lot higher. So let's take off the USD price and the market cap. And now we just have the Bitcoin price down here. We've seen a low, a little bump up, and now we're getting a higher low. It could mean that accumulation is coming to an end on Tezos. Tezos is one of those smart contract coins which hasn't seen its day in the light yet. We've seen a lot of the other uh, smart contracts really blast off during this altcoin season. Tezos has lagged a lot may not get the same gains as a lot of the other smart contracts have, but I still think we could see a doubling or a tripling in this price. It's probably not too far-fetched, especially if we take another quick look at the USD price. We're about to explode past that all-time high that it had at around four bucks. We're currently sitting at 440. So we definitely wanna see this thing shoot off from here. And if we are able to get this Bitcoin price up a little more, then we could see a doubling of our Bitcoin. I think this could still work out if Bitcoin was to fall. Uh, maybe it'll see a shock drop initially, but because we're so low and because it's on its move up, we might see some money pour into this as it's one of the later altcoins to be taking off. So I do think that Tezos is a pretty good looking bet here and that's something that's definitely on my watch list. I'll probably be picking up some of this as well, some Tezos uh, to obviously increase my Bitcoin holdings. The last little piece I wanna have a look at is Wi-Fi. Grayscale is looking to offer Wi-Fi. Now, if you follow the channel, you know I've talked about Wi-Fi many times before, one of, of my favorite cryptocurrency projects, and I think it's a great way to increase my Bitcoin holdings as well. So with Grayscale looking to add it into their portfolio, doesn't mean a hell of a lot because obviously they have Zcash in here, no one's investing in, no one's investing in Stellar, Litecoin, Crazy, Horizon, I have a lot of, it's doing very well. It's actually over 10x from its low. It's getting closer to 20x from its low last year. Uh, no one talks about Horizon and then no one's buying it up here. So Wi-Fi, I think it's a, it's obviously a really popular DeFi project. It's coming into Grayscale. We'll see what will happen there. But uh, it's, it's definitely a good one on my books and I'm holding Wi-Fi because I want to increase my positions. And following from that, when I want to sell, where am I going to hold it? I've got a little article here about BlockFi Celsius Nexo. BlockFi is a great one to sell to, as is crypto.com. Uh, basically, they're like savings accounts, so I can just hold the cryptos in there and wait until I think there is a better time to buy up other cryptocurrencies. So if you're interested in that, I have links to those in the description down below. If you wanted to buy anything I talked about here, there's a link to SwiftX down below and Binance for the international guys, SwiftX, SwiftX for the Aussies. I mentioned those because there are a lot of scammers in the comments section and I don't want you clicking on anything down there. There's WhatsApp numbers, Telegram stuff. It's all a scam. Forget that stuff. Just check this stuff out. L official links are in the description or my pinned comment down below in the comment section. That's what I'm seeing with Bitcoin at the moment. Personally, like I said, wrap it up, summarize. I'm not buying yet, but I think there are some other potentials out there which are looking pretty good on their charts. I want to see a bit of a pullback in Bitcoin. If we happen to shoot up to 50, 60, 70 grand, so be it. We're already at 50 grand. It's not that much of a gain compared to what I can make on some of these other coins. And then I can funnel it back into Bitcoin. So that's the game plan here. If you enjoyed that, let me know. Hit the like button down below. Let me know in the comments, what is your game plan from here? Do you see a intermediate top coming? Not the major top, but do you see a top coming in the next week or two? Let me know in the comments down below. 
If you want to stay in touch with the channel, subscribe as always, hit the bell notification icon if you haven't done so already and click all so you can see the notifications come up when I post a new video. And lastly, my trading course is 40% off at the moment. If you want to get a piece of the action, link is in the description down below for the discount code. Put that, pop that in when you're checking out, get you 40% off the trading course. All right, guys, I'll see you at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.